three, two, one. You ready? You're listening to the Real Pineapple Podcast Network. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. This is The Real Pineapple. This is your humble host, Hunter, here. Hope you guys are having a great uh, wrap-up to your weekend. Uh, But hey, we've got Memorial Day weekend coming up. So, uh, yeah, so hopefully this week flies by, huh? Uh, Okay, so I've got a review for what is the number one film on Netflix right now uh, called... The Wrong Missy, it's written by, uh, sorry, it's directed by uh, Tyler Spindle, uh, and it's also, uh, it's written by Chris uh, Pappas and then Kevin uh, Kevin Barnett. Um, Tyler Spindle, as far as a director, you don't know, you really wouldn't know a lot of his stuff. He's done a couple TV shows, uh, uh, TV episodes. Uh, he directed the Netflix movie Deported. Uh, not to pour that, Father of the Year, pardon me, which also starred David Spade. Uh, never saw that. Um, I'm sure it's it's whatever. Um, but Chris uh, Pappas, he is uh, he was the writer on that movie, The Do Over, which was an Adam Sandler, David Spade movie. Um, he's a writer on the Righteous Gemstones, and I fucking uh, well, he wrote a couple episodes. But I fucking love the Righteous Gemstones, um, and he's a was a consulting uh, producer. Kevin Barnett, he was a co-writer on the Do Over, and a writer on Hall Pass, and a writer on the film. I'm gonna go ahead and compare this to, and we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, he's also a consulting producer on uh, the Righteous Gemstones. So, okay, let's just jump into this. Uh, this is a Happy Madison production, and if you guys have listened to the podcast for any length of time, you know how I feel about Adam Sandler. I It bothers me because I see something like uh, the original Hotel Transylvania. I see something like Uncut Gems. It shows Adam, Tan- uh, Adam Taylor. Oh, my God. It shows Adam Sandler's talented. I really think this guy, um, I watched his uh, 100% Fresh special, and I thought it was actually, th- thought it was actually all right. Uh, the, the, the tribute song he did to Chris Farley, I thought was fucking excellent, and it, it made me genuinely get teared up. What's so frustrating is that he is clearly okay with just coasting on, you know, his brand, his name recognition. Uh, David Spade is one of those guys who I usually like more than I don't. Um, I actually just got my girlfriend, Leia, I just got her introduced to uh, Just Shoot Me. She had never uh, seen that, but uh, I will forever love David Spade, just, not just because of Just Shoot Me. Um, obviously, Emperor's New Groove, uh, notwithstanding, because that movie's wonderful, but he did that CBS show for like eight seasons of Rules of Engagement, that I was a really big, uh, that I was a really big fan of. I really, uh, I really enjoy that quite a bit. Uh, the original Joe Dirt is, I think, excellent. Um, obviously, it does get a little spotty from there. Uh, you know, Grown Ups too, and, uh, and the original Grown Ups. But uh, I think David Spade's a funny guy. Um, I'm not super familiar with Lauren uh, Lapkus. I know I've seen her in things here and there. Uh, I, I, I recognize her from Crashing, is what I recognize her from. Uh, apparently, she's on Nor- Orange is New Black. Sorry, guys. I try to get into Orange, in, Orange is New Black. It just doesn't hit for me. Sorry. What are you going to do? Um, I've seen her on Big... Uh, I remember seeing a clip on Big Bang Theory. Like, I, 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 I've i seen her uh, places. But here's the problem with this movie. Uh, Kevin Barnett, who was one of the uh, co-writers I mentioned earlier... He is also a writer on uh, the movie The Heartbreak Kid. Uh, that was with starring Malin Ackerman and Ben Stiller. And that movie is pretty much, I think, the worst romantic comedy maybe ever. Um, I think that movie is atrocious because it tries to make Ben Stiller's character look like an asshole. And yes, he's cheating on his wife. They're, obviously, he's, he's a dick for doing that. But she, the Malin Ackerman's character, she is fucking crazy. Um, to a point where the, when he does cheat, I went, 
okay, you married this girl way too early. You got invested in this relationship way too early. And now you're paying for it because you didn't know who you were marrying. This movie is the exact same thing, admittedly, with some more laughs like the Heartbreak Kid is. Um, I will give the movie some credit. This movie starts off like the first couple minutes I went. This is not torturous. Um, the movie starts off with David Spade, uh, David Spade's character, uh, Tim Morris, uh, going ahead and meeting Missy, played by Lauren Lapkus, on a blind date. And uh, he gets a text from Missy saying, oh, I'm wearing this outfit. I'm at the bar. I'll meet you there. And she goes ahead and describes not herself, but another woman there to fuck with him. And as she calls it, break the ice. And the woman that she's describing is Roman Reigns' character's uh, uh, wife, who is pregnant, might I add. And so it leads to a very uncomfortable confrontation between uh, Tim and, uh, I don't know Roman Reigns' character's name in here, it doesn't really matter, buff scary Samoan. Um, But Melissa plays it off like, haha, isn't that so funny? And that is where, this is where the movie really pretty early on lays its cards out on the table for what kind of movie it's going to be. The movie really wants you at the end to buy Missy as being uh, this like kind of tortured, like quirky girl, but she just loves Tim and at the end of the day that's all that matters and... Honestly, guys, no. Sorry. You you don't get to just have her do all this terrible shit um, in the movie and at the very end and bottom of the ninth go, yeah, but she loves him. There, uh, there's a point early on on the first date where she drops her hair into her drink and she starts sipping on her hair, getting the, the wine off of it. I was like, what the hell? That's really weird. And... Uh, she yells in the middle of the restaurant, stop eye-fucking me! And, he, and Tim, rightfully so, is looking around like, what the what the fuck? And she's egging on Roman Reigns' character constantly while he's there. And so Tim goes to the bathroom to try to get away from her, which who could blame him? She He goes ahead and tries to climb out the window. She climbs under the st- or slides, pardon me, slides under the stall in the men's room, might add, and goes, oh, what you doing? Any sort of normal human being would go, oh, hey, they're trying to leave because I'm being fucking creepy. But no, he goes, yeah, I need to actually go to the bathroom. Would you mind? And she goes, oh, oh, I get it. When I need to take a dump, you know, I don't want anyone around. And it's just, it's so absurd. And Speaking of people who I really thought had something, so I'm I actually like Nick Swartzen. I'm not a huge fan of his of his stand up, but I liked um, his uh, his show uh, that he had on Comedy Central. Uh, Nick Swartzen's uh, pretend uh, pretend time, I believe it was called. Uh, I really like that, and I think Grandma's Boy is fucking excellent. I actually I dig Grandma's Boy uh, quite a bit, uh, but. In, 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 on Reno 911, he was fucking excellent. But it's so frustrating to see him in this because he is just this uncomfortable guy in the movie. He plays Nate, and Nate is basically stalking Tim. Uh, anytime Tim sends a text message about you know this woman, he's super aware of it. It's like he has his phone linked to Tim's phone. Um, so Tim is at an airport. I can't remember where they say he's flying. He meets this girl, uh, he meets this girl there because they both get delayed, uh, sparks kind of fly, they make out in the broom closet, and he goes, oh my god, this woman is awesome, we have so much in common, it'd be so cool to get to know her. So, he gives her his number, doesn't get hers, and this is where the hilarity of the movie goes ahead and kicks in the high gear, because she goes ahead and texts him, and he goes, Hey, you know, like, I was so happy we got to hang out and da da da. But it's not her who texts him. It's uh, the wrong Missy, as the movie would say. So he thinks he's talking to Missy, but he's talking to Melissa. He thinks he's talking to Melissa, but he's talking to Missy. And the movie. (laughs) Okay, so first off, that would imply that Tim gave Missy his number. Which they never show you, by the way. It's just implied that she got it somehow. And so, 
the com- his company is having a big company wide retreat. He thinks he texts, uh, sends the information to invite uh, M- Melissa, but said he gave him the wrong information to go ahead and invite Missy. And hilarity ensues for the weekend. And he's trying to go ahead and get this promotion. So Missy is a big monkey wrench in that. Yada yada yada. Okay. Um. Once they get to, I want to say they go to Hawaii. Just all bets are off. She, Missy walks in, immediately gets into an argument with some young children, uh, including yelling at them to, like, shut the fuck up. Um, she's just loud and, like, not even funny loud. She's just loud for the sake of being loud. She just runs, the first thing she does when they go ahead and get into their suite, she runs around in a circle going, oh my god! Teachers can eat my asshole. I'm like, this isn't fucking funny, you asshole. Like, it's it's so frustrating. And she does, uh, she gets in the bathtub at a point and does, uh, like, it sounds like the girl from the ring. She, like, puts rose petals over her eyes and then puts a mustache of her own using her own hair and, like, sticking her tongue at. Like, it's just, it's such a weird movie, but... I, I, but I just don't even know what they're thinking because, again, you have to, if you're going to go ahead and try to get sympathy for Missy, you have to have her be- uh, have her better written. And this movie really doesn't care about having her written at all. She's just a caricature of the per- of a person. At some point, you would just, you would tell her to leave or you would get security and have them throw her out. Um, I know it's his company retreat. Honestly, it would have made way more sense for him to go, hey... Oh, pardon me. It'd make more sense for him to go up to his boss or someone at the company and be like, hey, wrong information, like, mix up, please, can you just get rid of her? Um, it's absurd. Honestly, he should have just maybe looked at trying to get a, uh, splitting a room with her or something, but it's so ridiculous that he puts up as much shit as he does there's this scene um, because Melissa uh, told Tim that she's like a two star uh, or that she's a two sport athlete in college and all this stuff. And so, you know, Missy shows up. So they think that Missy's the one who's a two sport college uh, sports star. And so uh, he, he says uh, or mentions that, you know, she used to be like a championship diver. And so she's on the edge of this cliff and she's like, I'm going to dive into the water. And not pr- proceeds to fall off the cliff, hit multiple branches going down, and then face plant. Her face is not broken, her ankle's not hurt. Like, despite how much I hate the Heartbreak Kid, at least they had that gag that was kind of mildly entertaining with Malin Ackerman, where she goes ahead and gets the uh, gets sunburned. That could have been something, but the only thing they really have is that she, uh, he goes ahead and puts her, uh, helps wheel her up on a cart. Like you would use for luggage. Um, and then that immediately leads into a scene where... <laughs> leads into a scene where Tim is fucking his ex-wife Julia. Played by Sarah Chalk. You of course know her um, uh, as Dr. Elliot Reed from Scrubs. But there's this whole scene where he is fucking her. Or thinks he's fucking his ex-wife. But he go, but he's fucking... He's basically fuck facing, as Missy would say, uh, her. And she goes, Oh my god, I'm fuck facing you too, Simon Cowell. And I'm just like, Why? These aren't even jokes, these are just references. And of course, of fucking course, it's an Adam Sandler movie, so he has to show up. Rob Schneider is here as Camante, and he plays a guy, uh, he's working on this boat. He goes ahead and plays a guy who had. Uh, three of his fingers, except uh, his pinky and his thumb, bitten off by a shark. And so this company retreat that Tim is on, they have a uh, they have a point where they're going to go ahead and get into a shark cage. And for whatever reason, and it makes no fucking sense, Missy goes ahead, knows that they're in a shark cage pressures Tim into going to the shark cage, makes him, makes him look like an asshole in front of his boss, goes ahead and goats him into going to the shark cage, and then she goes ahead, goes under the boat uh, to the like the kitchen area, 
goes ahead, finds some fresh fish, goes ahead, cuts it up, and the, the, the boat even has a sign that says no chum. Like, don't throw chum to the fucking water so that these sharks don't come. And she walks up back up on deck with a bucket, and Rob Schneider's character is even like, hey, it says no chum, what are you doing? And so they have this legit conversation about it, and she goes, where's no sharks, I'm trying to make it more fun. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? And she throws this chum into the water and almost gets uh, Tim and his boss killed. It's such a genuinely just shitty look. And she excuses it by going, I was trying to create a magical moment between you and your boss. And he even brings up, rightfully so, it said no chum. And she says, it wasn't my, it wasn't chum, it was my throw mixed with some chum. I'm like, that is so goddamn stupid. It This movie keeps doing crap like that. That's supposed to endear you to her and make you go, well, she's quirky, so he would kind of fall for her. No, why the fuck would he? And then on top of that, because they just have to have some wacky subplot here, they go ahead and they have her be a counselor too. So she's a, a I guess you'd say Jill of all trades. She's like a counselor. She's kind of in, she's in like massage and knows how to work people's kinks out. Um, she's also a sex therapist apparently too, along with being a big old alcoholic. And so she gets involved with Tim's boss and basically goes ahead and basically destroys their marriage because she tells the wife, you deserve better than him. And, <laughs> oh, this movie. And then that's a whole subplot of her hypnotizing him so that whenever he sees Tim, uh, he sees his grandma who passed away. It's, it's, it's such a weird movie. And then there's even a fucking talent show. I mean, it's not a dance number at the end of an animated film, but it's fucking right there. And it's just, all these things are just so not well executed. It, you see you see Tim's ex, so you know there's going to be some cheating subplot there, and they have to work out their shit. And I, If I can give the movie credit for anything, it didn't have them get back together. That is one thing I will give the movie credit for, but... This movie overall, there's just, near the end of the movie, David Spade, he's he's kind of playing the straight man here, kind of like in, uh, like in Tommy Boy, but <coughs> he's just enough David Spade-ish that it kind of works. I think with a better script, uh, this really could have actually been fun, because David, uh, David Spade does get some zingers in as Tim that I went, oh, okay, that was, that was, that was kind of funny, um, but... So much of this movie, and Nick Swartz and his character is just written so uncomfortably and stockish that his jokes don't even hit. Um, and Nick Swartz isn't the funny guy. Um, it's just, it's just really frustrating. There, there's a threesome scene in here that is done by, with hijinks. I just went, of course, you couldn't even take this mild thing that you kind of were setting up to be kind of an interesting uh, commentary on how you kind of close the book on an X, and you couldn't even let your movie breathe enough uh, to go ahead and let that happen. And, of course, they have to have the inevitable scene where Missy goes ahead and sees something uh, where Tim was talking to someone about her, and so she has to run off. And even that whole thing of her running off, I went, you know what, have you seen what you've done to him this weekend, you fucking asshole? <laughs> it, it's, it's just, it's shit like that over and over where I just went... This is bumming me out. There's really no reason for this movie to exist. And yet, I didn't hate... I, I, I hated it, but I didn't hate this like I hated something like Sandy Wexler, where I was like, I need this to be over, or I'm going to jump off a bridge. I mean, this was slightly better than that. So I won't give it a go fuck yourself just for that reason. But, oh man, this was just... This was a bummer to get through. And... The movie gives some commentary at the end, kind of about uh, being free and not uh, not having structure and things like that. And I went, you can be free and have some structure. Like, it makes it seem like uh, being completely free is the way to go, which I went, no, you, everyone needs some structure. I mean, not corporate level, but everyone needs a little bit. But this movie's just all over the place, and the movie's 
really the struggle the most in its writing. Uh, I do think that uh, Tyler Spindo, I think he's a pretty decent director so far. Or, uh, uh, yeah, I, I think he's a pretty decent director so far. Um, he has a good eye for just shots in general and how for make, really using the atmosphere. Um, he makes Hawaii look fucking beautiful. He does a really great job of shooting it. Um, he's got that part, I won't say down, but he's got a good grasp on that part of being director. But as far as getting, you know, getting uh, the best out of your actors, getting the most out of the script, choosing a script, uh, he does not have those components down yet. So he's got some, he's got some work to do. But, like I said, I wouldn't give this a go fuck yourself. Um, uh, I will give this... Oh God! I will give this a very rare F plus <laughs> because, again, it's dumb. Yes, but you know what? Yeah, uh, no, D minus is too is too generous. Yep, F plus. I stand by my F plus. F plus. There you go. But uh, yeah, this is on Netflix. You don't have to pay to to watch it. Well, directly, but you know what I mean. But uh, yeah, it could have been better. Really could have been better. But what are you gonna do? But, guys, The Wrong Missy, have you seen it? Hope you haven't. Let us know what you thought. You can go ahead and like us on Facebook at The Real Pineapple. You can follow yours truly on the Twitter at jhunterrealpineapple. You can follow Scott on Twitter at Nearman the First, And you can follow Colin on Twitter at The Real, that's R-E-E-L, O'Neill. And you can like us, uh, like, share, and subscribe. Find us on SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Podbean, Stitcher Radio, uh, Spotify, and iHeartRadio, and Stitcher Radio at The Real Pineapple. Uh, guys, thank you so much for listening. We'll have reviews up this weekend, uh, uh, or this week, pardon me, uh, for The Last Dance. Uh, the last episodes tonight, I'm so sad, it's almost over. But uh, we'll, have review, we'll have reviews up for The Last Dance. Uh, we'll have a review up for Chronicle as well, which I'm... Really excited to review that. Uh, we'll have a review up as well for Scoob uh, this week. And uh, we'll have a review up as well for uh, this movie uh, called The Qu- uh, the Quarry, which I'm excited to talk about as well. Um, guys, thank you so much for listening. Please stay safe out there, and we'll talk to you guys soon. You guys have a good one.